recording. Welcome everybody. It is the 1970s Rowdy class and today we are doing a song by the iconic group Chicago. Originally they were called the Chicago Transit Authority and then they did have to change it so they did shorten it to Chicago. Written by Robert Lamb. They, he was one of the founding members. He was the keyboard player for Chicago. Um, 1969. So why is it in the 70s book? because it actually got popular in 1970, so it just made the cut. <laughs> it was recorded for their second album, Chicago, titled Chicago, with Peter Cetera on lead vocals. Um, Robert Lamb said he composed 25 or 624 on a 12 string guitar with only 10 strings. <laughs> the lyrics were actually written in one day so it was it was kind of one of those things, not a five minute on the back of a cocktail napkin thing, but he did write the lyrics in one day. Okay, now, here's the thing. What is this song about? Uh, a lot of people thought, oh, it's about drugs. 624 is actually some kind of a, a meme for LSD. So, yeah, so this has got to be one of those druggy songs. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's stupider than that. <laughs> this is a song about writing a song. And that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Robert, Robert Lamb lived in a hippie house. It was a house full of hippies and, and it was in the Hollywood Hills. And so when he, he looked out, all he saw were neon signs and flashing lights. Okay, so that was one of the cool things he said about living there. Now, here's the meaning behind 25 or 624. That is the time. It's either 25 or 26 minutes to 4 in the morning. That's it. <laughs> no, no code. It's not a code, secret code for anything. It's either 25 or 26 minutes to 4. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's... <laughs> The song is about trying to write a song in the middle of the night. The song's title is the time of the song. <laughs> because of the unique phrasing of the title, it has been interpreted to mean everything from the quantity of illicit drugs to the name of a famous person in code. <laughs> the album was released January 1970, and the song was released in June of that year, climbing to number four on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. It was the band's first song to reach the top five in the U.S. You know, and I've always told you, what do bands write about? They write about what they know. They write about what they know. So here's Robert Lamb. He's sitting in his hippie house. It's the middle of the night. He looks at his watch, and it's between 25 and 26 minutes to 4 o'clock. So that, he wrote that down, and he used that as a phrase. <laughs> 25 or 6 to 4. <laughs> and because it's a rock band with horns, now that's what makes Chicago so different from every other rock band, is that they have all the fabulous brass and horns. And so we are going to do some presets where we're going to set up horns. All right, now I have to make a confession. For those of you who were in my morning class and you took one of these, uh, Mr. Andy, who's sitting behind me here, he did already find a mistake on it. And it happens to be um, A1, where it says Red Orchestral Genius Sound Number 1, Brass Ensemble Number 24. That's a mistake. It's number 242. It's 242, so just fix that. Not 24, but 242. Okay. So, yes, you're going to need to set up. Basically, this is a three preset song. As you can see, the last six are pretty much cut and paste. So, once you get A1, A2, and A3, you're done. If you want, you could just do those three and just keep pushing those three wherever you need them. If you want, you could do what I did and just cut and paste and put them in order. Now, that being said as well, you may not like my roadmap. You may want to do your own roadmap. Because what I also did is I wrote the intro. There's the intro. It's two lines long. And it repeats. 
I also have a coda. So the new coda is in place of the old coda. And I would absolutely recommend making a copy of that third page and taping it because you're going to have to go back and forth a lot and you don't want to be turning pages. So the new coda replaces the old coda. Not only is that introduction an introduction, it is also going to be an insert in between some of the verses, not all of them. All right, so you can pretty much make your own order of things, but I tried to follow it as exact as I could. One thing you're also going to want to do is you are going to want to note L and U because when I've got the sounds here, you're going to have, whoop, see if we can see this a little bit better. You're going to have the sounds here and the sounds here, okay? This is your brass. This is your brass guys. These are your horns. This is going to be Peter Cetera and Robert Lamb and the other guy, I can't remember his name, singing. Those are your three lead singers, okay? Peter Cetera takes, takes most of it, so it's going to be an organ, and it's going to be just a solo organ until you get to the chorus, and then you just add AOC. And that's going to be the organ sound. All right, now when I get to the new coda, I just want to explain a little bit about what I did. All right, you're going to have these chords. They're full-fingered chords. And you're going to play those with the right hand down here where the brass goes. And what's your left hand going to be doing? Your left hand is not going to be playing chords here. Your left hand is going to be playing single notes up here. So your hands, you're not going to be doing it. Your hands are going to be like this. But the way to read this is I've got the chords written on the lines and spaces like they should be. And then your left hand is going to play those notes on the upper keyboard. Okay, you'll figure it out when you get this. I just want to make sure that you understand what that is. But you need that coda, you need the coda to sound right. Because this coda, to be honest with you, eh, there's, there's words for that coda, and they're not nice. <laughs> this is not well written here at all. But I do have to admit, they did a nice job with the brass solos that they do have in here. Your first three lines on page 302, that's all brass. That's all going to be lower keyboard. And it's pretty accurate the way they wrote it. I am changing some of the notes to make them a little more to the, to, to the original. However, what, what's here is not bad at all. If you just play what's here, you're going to be fine. OK, see, now you lose my face. Huh, that's all right. It's better to watch the keyboard, I guess. Um, so you're going to put an L at the top of the page because you're going to start this on your lower keyboard. Your intro is going to be on upper keyboard. Then you're going to put an L and come down here to play the first three lines. You know what? As long as we're doing this, let's also put the preset numbers. A1 is the intro. The intro is actually going to be A1, A6, and A9. And A1L is going to be these three lines. Uh-huh, sure. A1L is going to be these three lines at the beginning of the song. When you get to line four, that's going to be a U. That's going to be go back to your upper keyboard. And you're going to have three presets there. A2, A4, A7. A2, A4, and A7. If A2 is the only one you write, that's okay, because I told you there's really only three. And then you can just go, you can just use the first three and just keep pushing the ones that you need. I just lined them all up. All right, now, it's going to be a U for the first three measures. Waiting for the break of day is U. And then where you have that rest, I'm going to give you some extra notes. I'm not going to give them to you now. Oop, here comes somebody else. I'm not going to give them to you now. 
I'm going to give them to you later, but you're going to put an L for that measure so that you remember to go back down here to play those notes. And here we go again. I've got my camera just in the wrong spot. Second page. Uh, John? Yeah. So that's on the first page, the lower, uh, the last last line, last measure. Mm -hmm. You want on the uh, lower keyboard. Lower keyboard, because that's okay. your brass. That's okay. going to be your brass, OK? Then at the top of the next page, go ahead and put a U and an octave 8 VA. Actually, you should have done that on, you should have done that already down here. Page 302, the first line where it's an A2 U, you also want to put 8 VA. You want to play that line an octave above. So instead of playing it all the way down here, you're going to be playing it right here. And that just sounds better. And it's also going to be easier to go from your singer to your brass and then right back up. So top of page 303, it's a U and it's an 8 VA. And you can just make a couple of dots. You don't have to make them all the way across because we're going to be changing some chords. So don't, you don't want to cover up your chords. That's for three lines searching for something to say. Now remember, he's writing about writing a song. So now the lyrics make sense. <laughs> Last measure of, of top line, 303, L, because you're going to go back down here, and I'm going to give you some notes for the brass. Second line, first measure, go back to a U, upper, and go back to octave, so put an 8 VA with a couple of dots. And that again Fine. is, yes? Um, the first line on um, 303, last measure, you uh -huh. can also put the lower keyboard. Uh -huh. Now that's just for that one measure. And then when we get to the second line, you want us on the upper, upper keyboard. keyboard again. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'll give you the notes, but not right now. I want to make sure we get the U's and the L's right and the presets. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do those three lines. And then you're going to go back to an L for the last measure. You notice those are all rests. I'm going to give you the notes that you're going to put in. So an L for the last measure of line two. Mm -hmm. Line three, go back to a U, 8VA for three measures. The last measure, guess what? L, and I'm going to give you the notes for the brass. Fourth line, U, and you're, it's this, this is where we're going to be changing. Did I change there? Yes, this is where the, um, the guys start all singing together. So you're going to write a U, and you're going to have three presets, A3, A5, and A8 at the beginning of line four. And again, it's, it's upper octave 8 VA. Now, don't go to the lower octave. There's no brass in that last measure. You stay on the upper keyboard. Stay on the upper keyboard. Go to hey, the next page. Dawn, yeah. Dawn, excuse yes, me. Are, are you going octave 8 VA or A VA? 8. The number 8, eight okay. VA, and that just means octave. You're going okay, to you. play it an octave higher than what it's written. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you are welcome. The last measure, leave it alone. Just there's a rest there, and we're still on the upper keyboard. Turn the page. We're still on the upper keyboard. Now, that first ending, you're going to put a 1, comma, 2. 1, comma, 2. The first time you are going to end the first ending at the end of line 1. So you want to put some repeat dots there and put first time. I always put 1x. That means first time. And that's going to be some repeat dots okay. that are going to Thank take you to A4. At the end of the line, that, that solo that's coming up, the instrumental, that should not happen until the second, after the second verse. You shouldn't play that the first verse. So I'm going to end the first ending at the end of line one. The end of line one. Then you're going to go back to the dots. 
So you can make some repeat dots because you're going to go back to the dots that you've already marked on page 302 as A4. So if you want to use a color, you could do that. You could put like a green color at the end of that line and oh. then go back to line four on page 302 because you're going back to A4. Go on? Yeah. Then can I put a color on that? On yeah. page 304, put the dots on the first yes. line, last measure, yes. and go back to uh, 302. Correct. To the where the dots are. Four. Correct, where the dots are. Okay. Yep, Good. you can do a color with that. Second time, the second verse now, you're going to play the second verse. And when you get to the top line of page 304, you're going to play that first ending again. But the second time, you're going to keep going. The second time, you keep going. So oh. the dots are only for the first time. Okay. The second time, you're going to keep going. At the beginning of line two, you're going to put an L. Put an L because you're going back to the lower. That is a horn solo. So that's going to be, and they did a pretty good job of writing that. Okay. When you get to... Line four, at the end of the second ending, where the dots are, you're going to write A6 insert. A6 insert. You're not going back to the dots. You're going back to your insert. Can we write A6 on that? You can. Okay. You may. <laughs> You may for all you school teachers okay. out there. So, so that means uh, we want to put it on, oh, where the A1 is. Put, um, yes, where the A, yep. You're going to okay. go back to your insert. I know it's hard to see this one I because I, I want to show this down here too. All right. So you're going back to the insert, and you're going to play those first two lines. Then you're going to go to A7. Now you're going to go back to the dots. So your dots are going to go back to the dots, but you're going to put an insert in between. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Now you're going to do verse 3. And if you read the lyrics, it's pretty cool. Feeling like I ought to sleep. Spinning room is sinking deep. Searching for something to say. Waiting for the break of day. It's middle of the night and he's trying to write a song. So he's writing a song about writing a song. 25 or 6 to 4. <laughs> it's the time. <laughs> And then when you get to the top of the page, it's going to say you're, you're, it, you want to not go to the coda, you want to go to the third ending. Your third ending is, the, is what's printed as the second ending. So you actually want to cross out the two coda, cross out that two coda at the top of the page, because that's yeah. totally, just cross it out. We're not using that as a two, we're not using that. You go into the third ending, which is printed as the second ending. It's on line four. And now you have two thin lines. Now what you're going to write there, and it says DC Alcoda. Okay, that's all right. But what we're going to do is we're going to do A9 intro plus new coda. So basically you're going back to your, your sheet that I'm writing for you. And you're going to play these two lines, and then you're going to go to A10 and do the new coda. Oh. Okay? So this is an insert. It's the intro. It's an insert. You're going to play it twice in between verses, and then you're going to take it to the new coda. Now, is that a little bit weird? Yeah, it is. If you yeah. don't like if you don't like my directions, if they don't work for you, make your own directions. Okay? Honest and truly. Make your own directions. Dawn? Yeah. Um... Uh, about the coda, you said a uh, DCR coda. We don't we cross off the coda, and then uh, we put A9 there, and uh -huh. then uh, go to the insert. And then the new coda. And then go to the new coda. New, that's not the coda nine. that's here, and you want to cross out that coda that's here. Just cross out that all those measures. Cross those out. You're okay. going to go to the intro and then the new coda. So you're just going to play that sheet that and I... And where was A10? A10 is the new coda. Oh, okay. All just right. the new okay. coda. I understand. It's the very last thing you play. Yep. 
Okay, so now you know the, the L's and the U's. So I'm going to play the song, and you also know the roadmap. Okay, and you also should have all of the presets written in. So now I'm going to play it and see if you can follow along the best you can. We're, I'm starting on basic rock or rock 8 beat at 136 beats per minute. I am also setting up my foot switch to go. Now, if you're in a smaller instrument, just go to rock full band and set yourself up with an organ and some brass. That's what you do. That's all you really need. And don't worry about all the little changes that we're doing. You just play the song and enjoy the song. It does go pretty fast, but it's a, it's a really cool song. But now that you know, it's a song about writing a song in the middle of the night. It's not about drugs. It's not a secret code. <laughs> but it is just a very, very cool song. All right, here we go. I'm going to start with a one introduction, and let's go.
Yeah, that's why you need that coda. You need those yeah. horn chords. That's what ends the song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's excellent, Dawn. That's excellent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gonna drive me to drink, but it's <laughs> <laughs> no. This is this is very cool song, because, and it, Chicago is just a cool group because it's a rock and roll band with horns, and the horns just add the spice. And so, yeah. if you don't have those horns in there, it's not going to sound. So that's why even on a smaller instrument. If you just set it up to rock full band at 136, or go a little slower if you have to, make sure you set up your upper as a as a an organ and your lower as some horns. As a matter of fact, I'm using vintage or rhythm preset zero and just changing what's on the bottom. I'm leaving the organ that's up on the top. Um, now for the for the introduction, I'm adding an electric guitar to that top so that you get that you get an organ and that guitar sound and it also gives you that percussive pop to do the because just with an organ it's not going to sound now the organ sound i'm using for peter satara and the guy's voices for their vocals and then i'm using the lower um, harmony aoc and a couple of different brass sounds. And I just experimented with all my genius voices until I got the flavor that I wanted. But if you don't like what I got, you can put some different ones in. That's OK, too. But because I'm on AOC, you just have to play a nice little run. All right, first of all, any questions on the roadmap? Uh, one. OK. On page uh, 303. Uh-huh. Um, the lower key on the second line at huh? the last measure, uh, huh? lower keyboard. Yes. And then uh, the same on the third line. Correct. And that's my only question. Uh huh. Okay. Now there's different things in those. It's always that last measure. There's different things in that last measure. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I got all that. Okay, so that's the next thing I'm going to do. Now don't forget. Remind me if I don't give you new chords, you need new chords. These are not the right chords in here at all. If you've tried oh, it and it didn't oh. sound right, that's why it didn't sound right. Your chords aren't right. But oh. let's do the extra notes, the extra notes. All right, let's start with page 302, top line. Because your extra notes are pretty much just with, the, with, your, with your horns. Okay, the first line is, uh, the first measure is okay. Second measure, cross out the A and the C, beats one and two, and just put a half rest there. Put that little rectangle on that B line and put a half rest there. So the A note and the C note you don't need. Just play the ABA. The ABA is good. So your very first, your very first line is going to sound like... <laughs> That's your first line. Mm -hmm. You don't need that A and C in there. Okay. All right, let's go to line two. The D is good, but you're going to tie it. I want you to tie that D to another D underneath that F chord in the second measure. Oh. So you're just going to make another D half note, half note, a white note with a stem, uh -huh. and just tie it. Make a tie. Cross out the E underneath. Cross out that low E. Okay, we're not going to play the low E or the low B. Cross out both of the notes that are printed there. And under the E chord, you are going to put a B note on the middle line. So you're going from a D for six counts. Whoops. Two, three, four, one, two, B. And then the B is for the uh, underneath the E chord. So it's easier than what's actually written here. Okay. Okay, now, under the A minor, you can play exactly what's there. I didn't really like it. Um, I used the original. The B is good. The E is good. Cross out the low D. You're going to the E a little longer. Change the A to a B 
B on the third line. So you're going to cross out the A and put a B on the third line. Cross out the F sharp and put an E on the first line. So you're doing a B E B E is basically it. If you if you know what it is, you are going to play the G A B. Okay. And then the next line, second measure. Yeah, you've got all those F sharps. You've got all those to do. <laughs> If you can't do them, slur them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Second measure, the A is good. Instead of going all the way down to the C, you can cross out the C and just go to the E on that first line. You don't have to all go all the way down. Go down to an E. A, E, and then the rest of it's good. All right, let's do some more brass. Let's go to the line four. Let's go to the last measure where you have the F chord and the E chord, which are good chords, by the way. We're not changing those. Here's what you're going to write. Now, how do you write that? How do you write that? You need to write the first four notes in the space of one beat. So write small, close together. A, B, C, D, E. Now that E is going to be a quarter note. The first four, A, B, C, D, those are going to have stems connected with a double flag. Those are sixteenth notes. Four sixteenth notes equals one beat. That just means you play them fast. <laughs> The E, A, B, C, D, those four get connected with the double flags. The E, put a stem, that's going to be a quarter note. Then you're going to do, underneath the E chord, you're going to put a rest. A quarter rest. A quarter rest. I'm looking for one so you can copy it. I don't see any in the song. Oh, yeah. There's, there's one at the end of the first ending. It's that lightning strike. So you want to put a quarter rest under the E, and beat four is a G gorilla on the second line. So that one measure is going to be. Could you do that again? Uh-huh. A, B, C, D, E. Rest, G. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, rest, G. You know what? Let me see if I can show it to you in the window because you're going to copy this one several times. Whoops. Can you pick that up for me, Mr. Andy? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's going to look like that. G. Okay. Wait, can you put it up again? A, B, C, D, E, rest, G. Okay, I, I'm up an octave. I get it, but in a straighter line. <laughs> That's okay, as long as you know what the notes are. Well, as long as can you every, know. As long can, as you know be, notes are. can you show that again? And please, yes, can I everybody can. be quiet so we can see it? Yep, okay. Remember, if you talk, you're in the main window. As long as I'm talking and showing, I'll be in the main window. So everybody be quiet for now. A, B, C, D, E, and the A, B, C, D are connected with double flags. Then you have the E is a, is a quarter note, then there's a rest, and then there's a G quarter note. Da 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 dum, bump. One, two, three, four, five, five. That's your fingering. You, unless you have six fingers on one hand. And then you can do six fingers, and that would work. <laughs> Okay, now re the reason I'm showing that is because you're going to do that again several times. Top of page 303, when you go to that lower keyboard at the end of line one, copy that. A, B, C, D with stems and double flag. E, quarter note. Underneath the E, put the quarter rest and beat four 
put a G. A, B, C, D, E, G. And you want that at the top of the next page? Top of page 303, last measure. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Second line, last measure. You're going to write a C on the first line below the staff as a half note. And then under the E chord, you're going to put an E elephant as a half note. So it's just C going to E, but you're going to put a squiggly line in between. Why? Because you're going to do, in, instead of a roll down, we're going to do a roll up. Can we see that on your writing? Just do a, a C on the first line below the staff. And then underneath the E chord, beat three, put an E on the first line of the staff, and then put a squiggly line in between, so you do this. You're just going to slide from one up to the other. Hit as many notes in between as you can. And if you have to slide a finger off a note, I won't look. C going to E. And then just roll your fingers up. Okay. Third line, last measure where you've got the L. You're going to copy what you did in line one. A, B, C, D, E, rest, G. Copy what you did. It's also at the bottom of page 302. You're copying that again. Line three, last measure. All right, last line, last measure. Nothing, leave it alone. That's a rest. Let's go to page 304. Okay, wait, excuse me. Yeah. One, two, three, the fourth line at the Nothing. end, leave it. Leave it. I already wrote it in. <laughs> no, 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 no. The fourth line, you leave it alone. That's a rest. Oh. There's nothing there. <laughs> Sitting okay. cross-legged on the floor. You can put FX or fill in. But yeah, that rest stays like a rest. There's no horns there. Top of the next page, 25 or 624. Now, the first and second ending. You're going to go from an F. Okay, you're also on a different. F is for actually a half note. A on the second space is beat three. And you're going to put a C on top of the A. On, on the last measure of, t of line one. So it's going to be F. And you're going to end up holding all the notes. So F, slide up to an A, then slide up to the C. So you end up with FAC. Now, if you saw what I did to make it really, really cool when you perform it, <laughs> you could go F, A, a and F, and add the C. And that just looks cool. Or you can just do it with your fingers. So that last measure, you're just holding the C from the second to the last measure. Is that correct? You're not playing a C in the second to the last measure. You're playing an F. Then you're playing an A and an F. And then the last measure, you're putting the C over the top of the A. Okay, so the second to the last measure, what am I just playing? just F going okay. to an A and an F. Then the last measure, the A is already printed. Right. So you're going to put a C on top and an F underneath. Got it. Easier to play than it is to write, honest and truly. Thank you. And you're going to copy that again on your line four. 
where we've written in third ending. It actually says second ending, but we're writing in third ending. It goes from an F to an A to a C. If you want, you can hold the F and then hold the A and the C and do it again. You can do the same thing. Okay. John? Questions? Yes. Okay, on, go ahead. On page three or four, one, two, three, the fourth line, mm -hmm. the uh, second measure yes. uh, for um, two, uh, below the F, we put F, A, do you want to see there? No, below okay. the F, you nothing. You leave the okay. F. The F is F is just F. Okay. And you're then hold you the it. F, and then you're going to have A over F. Correct. You're going to hold the A and the F, and then when you get to that next measure, it's going to be C A F. Oh, okay. So you're starting with one note. You're starting with an F. Then you're going to add the A. Then you're going to add the C. But you're sliding on the way up. Or you can use this hand to do that, to, to do that palmy slide. Okay. Silly little tricks to make you look good. <laughs> and it's fun to do. Hmm. Fun to do. Or just play F. A, C, just play it the way it is and you'll be fine. Okay, now you need to change the chords. Any questions about what we just did, the notes that we put in? Because that's all the brass that you got to put in. That's important. And it's easy to play. You just got the hard part is getting your hand from one keyboard to the other. That's it. But it's not hard to play. As long as you're using your AOC on your lower keyboard, it's going to sound like you got the whole horn section playing. And that's what Chicago is about, is, is a rock and roll band with horns. So let's get them in there. The instrumentals, those are horns. Now, we got to have the right chords. They got the wrong chords in here. I don't know if anybody tried playing it and went, how come this doesn't sound right? It's because the chords aren't right. So let's fix them. The A minor, let's go back to page 302. And it's basically the same chords over and over and over and over, but if they're not right, it's not going to sound. The A minor is good for one measure. Cross out the C and make it an A minor 7. A minor 7 instead of the C. Now here's the most important one, line 2. Cross out the D. We're going to change it. The, the chord's easy to play, and I'll show you how easy it is. It's harder to write than it is to play. F, sharp, minor, seven, flat the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough one to write, but it's actually so easy to play, you're going to go, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Okay, because here's your sequence of chords. Let's take off my background. Oop, I got it and put the easy on. There's A minor, C and A, A minor 7. You're adding the G, F sharp minor 7 flat the 5th. Leave the pinky and the thumb. Your notes are C, E, elephant, F sharp, sharp fish, and A, alligator. So you're, these two fingers stay the same. You're just moving the middle fingers. A minor. I don't like that sound. It must be my D. Let's get a lot of sound here. A minor. A minor 7. F sharp minor 7 flat the 5th. You're just moving two fingers. You're leaving F sharp minor 7 flat the 5th. It's C, E, F sharp, and A. So your outer fingers are still on that A minor chord. You're just adding an E and an F sharp. 
Now your F, E, and A minor are good. Now you repeat the sequence. The A minor at the end of line two is good. Line three, cross out the C and replace it with A minor seven. Second measure, cross out the D and replace it with that silly chord, F sharp minor seven flat the fifth, which is C, E, F sharp, and A. It's easier to play than it is to write, believe me. Once you, once you get the hang of that, it's just going to flow through your fingers and it's going to be really good. F and E are fine. Let's go to the next line. A minor is fine. Cross out the C in measure two and make it an A minor seven. Cross out the D in measure three and make it an F sharp minor seven flat the fifth. You see the pattern? The F and the E are good. Go to the top of the page. Guess what you're going to do? The A minor is good. Cross out the C. Make it an A minor 7. Cross out the D. Make it an F sharp minor 7 flat the 5th. <laughs> and it'll say that in the window. F sharp minor 7 flat 5. It says so right there. <laughs> the F and the E are good. Line two, A minor, is fine for one measure. Cross out the C, make it an A minor seven. Cross out the D, make it an F sharp minor seven, flat the fifth. The F and the E are good. Third line, the A minor is good. Cross out the C, make it an A minor seven. Cross out the D, make it an F sharp minor seven flat the fifth. It's just the same chords over and over again. F, E, good. Now, here we come to a new section. The F chord is fine and the C chord is fine. No changes to the fourth line. F and C, that's it. Go to the top of the third page. The G is fine. And the F in the first and second ending is fine. Wow. Now the instrumental goes back to the same chords we did at the beginning. So line two, A minor, cross out the C and make it an A minor seven. Cross out the D and make it an F sharp minor seven flat the fifth. As soon as you start playing that, you're going to go, oh, that's just so easy to play. Third line, F is good, the E is good, the A minor is good. Cross out the C, guess what you're going to make that? A minor 7. Cross out the D and make it F sharp minor 7 flat the 5th. Okay, the F and the E are good. The third ending, it says second, we made it a third. The F is fine. So that's it, you're done. Once you have that sequence of chords, the whole thing fits together. A minor, A minor 7. Add. Okay, see how that works? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that just, once you get that finger pattern going, and it is so easy, Get that finger pattern going. It works. It works so well. Is it the key of F? Is it the key of F? No. <laughs> no. A, minor. a minor. It's key of A minor, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, the last chords. You know, they've got you ending on a B chord. Yeah, okay, kind of, because that's what the horns are playing. But those are, it's such, they, they put so much jazz in there that when you play that coda, you're going to play the same notes that you've been playing, but it just works so well. There's just these obscure... Those, 
those are the notes that you need. And when you've got it in AOC, now it's not going to sound in AOC because we're not playing a chord. So you do have to play the full finger chords on that last section because we're not using chords. We're just using single notes in that upper hand or in that upper keyboard. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Your left hand on the upper keyboard. What what sounds am I hearing? What what is that? You're hearing what you're actually hearing are yeah. the same sounds that I was using for the introduction, but I'm playing them in the low octave. Okay. So it's actually an organ combined with a guitar. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Uh-huh. So it's the same ones that you're playing for the intro. Okay. But what I'm doing is I'm putting it in octave harmony so that when you're playing that chord, these are sounding like you're playing it like this. Because I've got it in octave harmony. And that's what gives it a fuller sound. You don't want it in AOC. You want those notes. But just doubling up on those notes made them sound really, really thick and fat. So that's why you want the octave harmony for that introduction. And that's all in the instructions. OK? Yep. Thank you. So, and, uh, and again, if you don't want to play any of that, you just want to play what's here on, on the page, make sure you have the chords. If there's nothing else that you listen to me today on this song, is you put it on rock basic or rock full band if you're on a smaller instrument you put your organ on top you put your brass on the bottom and you play the chords you if you play every single note in here exactly as written but you play the right chords it will sound i promise you if you want to what go what tempo did you use i am at 136 136 now if you want to keep it a little bit um a little bit slower until you get all the notes go ahead and do that but it should actually get up to about 130 or 136 in the end I really really had a good time doing this song is it hard to play yeah the hardest part is going from the upper keyboard to the lower keyboard even though I had it marked upper and lower, I still sometimes missed. That's going to be your hardest part, your hardest challenge, to do your horns on the bottom and keep your, your singers on the top. Your horn section is here, your singers are here. And that's probably the hardest thing. But other than that, you play it the way you remember it being sung. Now, what I am going to caution you also is do not play quarter notes the way they're written. It's kind of like my 1015 class this morning. I told you to play everything in between the beats. Don't play the way it's written. This is easy play. It's written with quarter notes. If you were to play it exactly as written, and I don't know if I can even do it. That's how it's written. That's two. That's too vanilla. It's too just lays there, OK? You want to listen to, go to YouTube and listen to Chicago doing this. This is going to be kind of like we did this morning. Play it in between the beats, waiting for the break of day, OK? And you got to play a little bit in between the beats. <laughs> If you have to make them a little bit staccato in order to do that, go ahead and do that. And again, it's, it's all about finding the right background and play with attitude. Just play it the way you would sing it. Play it the way you would dance to it, and you're going to be right. Easy play is always going to write as easy as possible for us to read it. And yes, these are the right notes. Most of this is the right notes. I corrected the ones I didn't like, but 
most of it is pretty darn good here. I was very impressed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just enjoy the song. Make it as hard or as easy as you want. Now, there again, just because I like the song doesn't mean you have to. If you didn't really care for the song, throw it away. <laughs> but I love the song. And don't tell Marie Shraven that you're throwing away her song, because this is her, <laughs> her number one go-to song. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Next week, I, we will do fingering. Stick around if you need fingering. Next week, we will do, oh, we're doing some queen next week. All right. We will rock you. Do some queen. And don't forget, don't forget to email me. Do you want book 366, which is the decade series 60s? Do you want, I think it's 52, might be 53, the black essential series? 1960s and go to Hell Leonard and see what songs are in each one if you're not sure. And oh. then let me know either by email. That's probably the best way. And um, just email me and then next week I'll make the announcement as to which one we choose. Or if you want neither, if you want neither one of them, make a suggestion. What would you like to have? I personally think that this has been really fun doing the 70s and I think it would be just as much fun to do the 60s, the same way we've been doing this. And if you want more generic songs, that's the Monday class. And the Friday class keeps it a little easier because Friday is technically level three. I will never do anything super hard in there. So that's the Friday class is Beautiful Ballads, book 336. Um, and yeah, we're going to have to start looking for a book for the Monday class as well. So keep, try to keep that one a little more generic. And no, I really don't have a lot of suggestions. Um, Helen, you gave me a lot of great suggestions on that. Um, I did write them down, so we'll bring those to class and see what we can do. Everybody else, go to Hell Leonard or go through your collection, and let's find another book for Monday that we're going to be a whole mix of Broadway, oldies, newies, um, fast, slow, gives a whole generic bunch of songs. Because Helen? those are good, too. Yes? The uh, black book, the 60s black book. What uh -huh. was the name on that? Um, I think it's the Essential. Yes. The Essential yep. series. Yep. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And there's some of the songs are going to overlap. They always do. But some of them are going to be different. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, we could do either one and we'd be okay. So let me know and we'll just take a vote. And then next week we'll, we'll uh, make the decision so everybody can start getting their books. Dawn? Yeah, we've got a lot of, we're going to do all the songs in here unless you guys vote not to. But, Dawn? You know, yeah. Hi, it's Michelle. Hey, how are I, you? I, I'm <laughs> Dawn Reed's daughter. Oh. Hey, I haven't heard that song since I was seven years old. Wow. <laughs> and you brought back my little child in me. Thank you. Wow, you're very welcome. Thank you. And you That's did a nice job. Love thank your music. You. Okay. That's what music is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you feel good, and it's supposed to bring back some awesome memories, and that's that's what it's all about. Hey, Don. Yeah. Uh, when will this song be available to us as your materials online? Um, as soon as Robert can get them on, it's usually four to seven days out. Um, okay. But if you need your materials now, email me, and I'm more than happy to scan. So it's yeah. five zero two eight at FletcherMusic.com. That, that's my email right here at the store. I'm more than happy to scan them over to you so you can have them right now. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. You don't have to wait for Robert to get them up there then. And I understand sometimes he forgets to put the, the connections, the, the handouts along with it. So you guys are the best. Okay, for those of you who don't need fingering, thank you so much for coming. I truly love this song. This was fun today. Um, and I can't do it without you. So thank you so much. The rest of you with fingering, get your pencils out. Let's do some more work. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Page 302, instrumental, B4, A3, G2, E1. Remember, we crossed out the A and the C in the next measure. A2. B3, A2, D5. Remember we crossed out the E and the B? 
But the high B, the underneath the E, is going to be a 3. Little check mark if you wish. B4, E1. B4, E1. We changed a few notes in there too. G2, A3, B4. Third line, A3, A3. G2. Check mark. All those 16th notes you can either do with a third finger or a second finger. Whichever finger is the stronger one, two or three, doesn't matter for all those F sharps. Next measure, A4, E1, A2, B3, A2, high D5. Let's go to the next line. A1, B2, C3, D1. Circle it. That is a thumb tuck. E2, G4, A5. Your little blurb, A, B, C, D, E, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the pop G, that's a 5 as well. Da 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 da. Pop. Upper keyboard on the next page, A1. B2, C3, D1, circle it, thumb tuck, E2, G4, A5. Then your little blurb, A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the G, 5. Second line, A3, B4, C5, B4, a3, B4, A3, E1. Then you can do a C1, your little blurb, C1, E can be 4 or 5, and then you're just going to do a finger roll all the way up, however else you want to work that. I did a 1 and a 4, and then I slid my finger from one to another. Let's go to line 3. A1, B2. C3, D1, circle, that's a thumb tuck, E2, G4, A5. There's a lot of repetition. It's pop music. It's rock and roll. A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The pop G, 5. Next line, A3, B4, C5, B4, A3, B4, G2. Little check mark if you want. Remember that rest. There's nothing in there. Don't do any more horns. Let's go to the third page. G3, A4, G3, F2, E1, G3, F1. Hold the 1. The A that we wrote in is a 3. The C that we wrote in is a 5, so you're going to end up with FAC135. All right, the horn solo, A3, G2, A3, B4, A3, B4, A3, G2, A3, B4, Put an arrow on this next A, make it a 2, B3, C4. Put an arrow on the next B, make it a 2, C3, D4. Put an arrow on the next C, make it a 2, D3, F5. That's just because we're going uphill. And then put a 2, squinch up your fingers. Two again. All right, line three is F5, E4, D3. The E can either be fours or threes because again, you got to do a lot of a lot of one, one, one note. If you can do it with your fourth finger, go ahead. If you need to switch to three because that's a stronger finger, go ahead.
And then underneath the E, if you want to play the G sharp, go ahead, make it a one. If you'd rather skip the G sharp, you can put a B on top of it, make it a two. Doesn't matter. I like the B better, but if you wanted to put the, e, the G sharp, go ahead. The third ending, F1, A3, C5. Again, you're just going to hold them all. So you have one, three, five. Okay. That's it. Cool song. Very cool song. Again, if you don't care for it, it's all right. But now you know what, 25 or 6 to 4, that's just 25 or 26 minutes to 4 in the morning when the guy's writing about writing a song. <laughs> no secret code, no drugs, no, no funny stuff. It's just all about him sitting on the floor going, gosh, I can't think of anything to say. <laughs> so it's a song about writing a song. It's very cool. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. Don't forget, if you live in the Villages area, Dennis Hawk coming on Saturday, 10.30, musical bingo, and 12 o'clock concert. So it's a whole different type of a schedule, short and sweet. And then you can go to lunch afterwards someplace, not here, because we're going to have cookies. We can have cookies for lunch. <laughs> Are you going to have that on the Zoom? No, unfortunately, no. Oh. Nope. nope, not putting them on Zoom. Nope. Holy Quinn. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't. He's going to be on a different organ, and I can't move the can't move my oh. Zoom table. Eh. I'm not that technically adept. <laughs> Thank you, guys, you, Dawn. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't forget to vote for your book.